one right there. A GCF does not have to be a monomial. All three of these terms have an X plus 1. So I'm going to pull that out. That's my GCF. What I'm left with, when I take that out, I'm left with a 5X squared. I'm left with a minus X squared. And I can't forget down here, that's a negative 1. Okay, that one doesn't just kind of disappear. I got to put something there to hold it in place. Um, then we want to simplify. 5X squared minus X squared is 4X squared. And anytime we're factoring, we need to ask ourselves, is that factored fully? Can I do something else? 4X squared is the difference of perfect squares. So that factors more into 2X plus 1 and 2X minus 1. And that is factored fully. That's the exact same expression. 4X squared minus 1 was the difference of perfect squares. So the square root of 4X squared is 2X. And the square root of 1 is 1. That's where that came from. Okay? If you take calculus with me, you will see stuff like that again. Okay, you will definitely see stuff like that again, and we're going to do another example like that here in a second. Okay, so we are going to just in general, a couple of examples here with factoring polynomials. We're going to do some of the factoring that you haven't done before. Okay, we're going to look at factoring some bigger expressions, not just quadratics. You know how to factor a quadratic. Okay, um, you should know how to factor a, a cubic. Uh, dip sum or difference of perfect cubes, um, but if I need to go over that a little bit more, we will. Um, but we're going to focus on some, some bigger polynomials and how those factor. Okay, so here's another example um, like the one that um, we did there at the end of the warm up. Okay, we've got 8x cubed times 2x plus 1 plus 3x times 2x plus 1 minus 3x times 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 1. Now, is there something right from the get-go that will make our lives a little bit easier? Okay, well, yes, okay, we can factor out of 2x plus 1, but is there somehow we can simplify this expression before we even factor it? Yeah, you can't pull out the negative and the positive. Okay, very good. Okay, I heard it from several people there. We've got a plus 3x and a minus 3x with the same expressions with them, so we can just kind of toss those out the window. They cancel each other out. So life automatically just became that much easier. Take out the 2x plus 1. Both those terms have 2x plus 1, so we're going to take that out. We are left with 8x cubed plus 1. Very good. Okay. Here's a little extra practice with that uh, factoring perfect cubes. Okay. 8x cubed plus 1 is a perfect cube, or the sum of perfect cubes. So... I'm going to go through it a little bit slower in case you haven't seen it or you forgot, okay? We take the cube root of 8, that's 2, and the cube root of x cubed, that's x. And we take the cube root of 1, which is 1. That's our binomial. Then we construct a trinomial by squaring the 2x. That's going to give us 4x squared. Then we multiply those two terms together, the 2x times the 1, so we get 2x. And then finally, we square the 1. And then we assign our signs using soap. It was a positive, so we use the same. Then it's opposite, and the last one is always positive. Now, probably, if you see this on the answer key, it's not going to be re uh, written that way. We've got 2x plus 1 twice, so we should simplify that, so to speak, and just write it as 2x plus 1 squared. That's how it would be written as an answer choice or on an answer key. Okay? Anytime you have common factors like that, if they're being multiplied, go ahead and write it as squared. Okay? All right. Now, the next example is something that we call factoring by grouping. Okay, factoring by grouping. Our leading term is, is a uh, cubic term, x cubed, but we have four 
Lawrence Kearns. Okay, we have four terms. So we'll do what we call factoring by grouping. We're going to group the first two terms together. We're going to group the second two terms together. There will be a GCF. Okay, there will be a GCF for each of these. So when we group these first two together, their GCF, look at the numbers. 15 and 8 is, or excuse me, 15 and 18 is 3. X cubed and x squared, we need to take out x squared. We are left with 5x plus 6. And we've got to pair the second two together. Now, I make sure when, when I'm drawing these little lines under, I make sure that my line goes under that first plus sign because if that's not a plus, um, it, it kind of changes our answer a little bit. But it is a plus. Uh, we're going to take out 4, right? Okay, we're left with 5x plus 6. So notice, our binomial terms here, our linear factors, 5x plus 6, is the same for both of them. So now I can look this with an A. That's a GCF for this entire expression, so we take that out. We're left with 3x squared plus 4. And there's no more factoring for us to do here. Okay? There's no more factoring for us to do. Now, if you have me come at three, I explain that a little bit differently uh, as far as uh, the order, but it's the same process. I just want to make sure that you guys do. Okay? Now, if your college kids will wait for just one more example, okay, then I'll let you go. Okay, so let's do one more. Factoring by grouping. 56n cubed plus 24n squared minus 35n minus 15. Okay, GCF between 56 and 24 is 8. Between n cubed and n squared is n squared. When we take that out, we're left with 7n plus 3. My first pair. Now the second pair, there's a negative in front of that 35. Remember I said anytime the leading coefficient is negative, we need to take out a negative. Okay, here's why. Because if we didn't take out a negative 5, then our linear factors would not be the exact same expression. So take out the GCF. They both have 7n plus 3. You are left with 8n squared minus 5. You should always check to see if anything else would factor, but that's not the difference of perfect squares, so you're finished. Okay, okay pair the first two together. We've got a GCF of 3n squared, which leaves us with 3n plus 4. Pair the second two together. We've got a GCF of negative 5, which leaves us with 3n plus 4. Again, those expressions, those linear factors, must be the exact same expression. They both have it, so we take it out as a GCF, 3n plus 4, and we are left with 3n squared minus 5. 3n squared minus 5, 3 and 5 are not perfect squares, so we're stuck. Well, we're not stuck, we're just finished. Okay? Alright, now this last one. Okay. Well, it's not done. There is a little bit that we can do, but, um, okay, in the first pair, 2 and 9, they don't have anything in common, okay, but we do have x squared in both of them, okay, and then the second pair, 8 and 3 don't have anything in common, but that first term is negative, so we want to take out a negative 1. And I really put up this example to show you that it looks like it's the setup 
of factory by grouping, but when you start the process, you don't end up with the same linear factor. So you can't put things into one table. Okay, that, that's that hard to do. Um, it'd be nice if you could do four, but you can't. Um, so we're done with, with that example. Okay.